Hi everyone, welcome back to SD San Diego. I'm George Favar. Today, I'm out at Old Town San Diego State Historic Park. It's Saturday, May 13th, 2023, and I'm pleased to bring you a profile of La Casa de Bandini. I'll be taking a look at who Don Juan Bandini was. We'll talk about the Cosmopolitan Hotel and how his home, constructed in the late 1820s, would be modified to meet the needs of San Diegans in the 19th century in a unique way. So I'm going to have a lot to bring you. I'm going to have a lot of photo. And I'm going to have a lot of illustrations. And I'm going to have some film from my filming today here at Old Town. And so you know what time it is when it's time for me to bring so much of San Diego's history to you. It's time for me to tell you and to say, let's roll it. Juan Bandini, one of the Dons of San Diego, was an early settler to San Diego and he ultimately became an elite figure. He arrived in San Diego in the early 1820s with his father and ultimately they would build a home and by December of 1829 it would be finished. It would be a one-story U-shaped adobe structure and he would accomplish a lot for himself and for San Diego. Here he is with his daughter, Margarita. So he's born in 1800. He'll die in 1859. And between these points in time, he's going to see a lot. He is going to be a power, a force in Mexican politics. And ultimately, because of being a force in Mexican politics, he will be a force in San Diego politics and ultimately a force in Southern California politics because this man got around, okay? Not only did he build the home uh, that we know of today once it was expanded later on after he passed away, uh, he was a member of the California Territorial Assembly uh, under the Mexican government. He was a congressman in Mexico. He was a businessman. Uh, he was a customs inspector. He got these land grants, Takade and Harupa Rancho. He'll have issues on his ranchos supporting and clothing his Native American workers, and they'll refuse to work. He'll appeal for outside help for support. And so he would encounter these kinds of issues uh, that uh, he wasn't always best suited uh, to deal with. Also, he had uh, the role in overthrowing a Mexican governor of California in the 1830s, and then later in the 1830s, attempting to overthrow another Mexican governor of California. His times in the 1840s, during the changeover from the Mexican government administration of San Diego to the United States of America's administration, of San Diego is going to be intriguing and uh, he'll even run San Diego directly for a period of time in the year 1848. So an amazing life, amazing times. So now let's focus on the home that he built. In his early years in San Diego, Juan Bandini married the daughter of Presidio Commandant Jose Maria Estudio, and of course we know of Casa de Estudio being just across from Casa de Bandini. So uh, what an interesting uh, neighborhood that was at that time. Interestingly, in December 1829, a Catholic priest will come down from Mission San Diego and he will bestow upon the home a blessing through the splashing of holy water on the walls, the original walls. So truly a special place that to this day we can marvel at uh, upon its later expansions and renovations. But when we look at these early drawings and sketches, we see with Casa de Bandini that the importance of the patio and the porch, all of that ability that people will have to approach uh, and to gather, and that's going to become an incredible, important 
role that this home is going to have uh, in the early days of San Diego. Here we see a Fandango, okay? Uh, people doing a Fandango uh, at this gathering uh, depicted here in San Diego back then, uh, 1847. All right, so there was a lot of intrigue in the 1840s and a lot of fun. What is it that makes a city? All right, it's not just strict residences and businesses, but also places for people to socialize and gather, have fun, and from time to time do a fandango. All right, so we see the first floor plan of Casa de Bandini. And so eventually what's going to happen in 1869 is there's going to be a second floor. And what's really neat about this structure is the ground floor essentially being adobe and the second floor constructed around 1869 is being wood. And it's a unique fusion and they did a lot of work on this building over the years, particularly uh, in the later 20th uh, century and in uh, the opening years of the 21st century to keep the structure that was expanded essentially together and also for the archaeological findings. So a lot of effort has been put into one of the first homes of San Diego to be preserved. We should recognize the legacy of Don Juan Bandini for all that he accomplished in continuing to boost San Diego during the critical early years of our history. Along comes Albert Seeley of Illinois, comes out to San Diego. Here he is with his wife, Emily Walker. He ran a stagecoach and mail line from San Diego to Los Angeles during 1868 to 1877. He's responsible for getting the second floor onto Casa de Bandini and running the Cosmopolitan Hotel. A lot's going on at this point in the late 1860s, early 1870s, before the railroad gets to going. We'll be coming back to uh, Casa de Bandini, uh, the Cosmopolitan Hotel over the times uh, as we go forward. But let's go ahead and let's go forward and let's take a look. You know, uh, you would get out to this place uh, in Old Town in the late 1860s, early 1870s, and you'd get aboard a stagecoach early, early in the morning. Uh, you would be on the stagecoach all day, uh, take it then overnight, staying somewhere, and then hopping aboard again, and then you would get into Los Angeles uh, late in the afternoon on the following day, okay? And the stagecoach travel, okay, we're not talking, you know, air-conditioned sports utility vehicles. We're talking stagecoaches. And if you want to see where it really was real in this city, this is what you got uh, in San Diego in the late 1860s, early 1870s, right there at Casa de Bandini. You can still see it today, Cosmopolitan Hotel. You can see in this picture, you can see the people in the course of their business of travel. And ultimately, isn't this place still a crossroads in San Diego? Things will start to wind down a little bit so far as activity for a long time uh, in Old Town, what we know of as Old Town. So you see Casa de Bandini through the years. Things have kind of gotten a little bit more sleepy. In 1888, the hotel would be sold. It would become an olive factory. And then ultimately, it would become the Miramar Hotel. It's also at the point in time where it was a red light district. Uh, I would have really enjoyed traveling back then even to have seen what Old Town looked like. Now, what's going to happen is in the late 1960s, 1970s, city of San Diego and state of California are going to go through, they're going to roll through, and they're going to do a lot of uh, attempts to renovate and to reconstruct. And so what we have uh, in 1980, uh, for a period of time of around 25 years, is the Casa de Bandini Mexican restaurant when it was in Old Town and a fascinating restaurateur and restaurant designer, Diane Powers, uh, ran this Mexican restaurant. Uh, and ultimately, however, though, uh, there would become changes to be made uh, by the uh, state of California. So after around 25 years, this uh, 
Mexican restaurant uh, that unfortunately I did not have the opportunity to have ever visited uh, would uh, pass uh, from being a Mexican restaurant to ultimately being going through a thorough reconstruction uh, and redesignation by the state of California. Uh, and so it would ultimately become what we know of today as the Cosmopolitan Hotel, which is an actual uh, operating hotel uh, with a restaurant. And uh, I can remember having uh, an interesting time uh, some time ago, about three or four years ago, uh, when I uh, went in uh, to uh, visit and uh, had a lunch uh, and a nice drink uh, out in the courtyard uh, behind uh, the uh, behind Casa de Bandini. So uh, it was a fun time. And uh, I actually had an opportunity to sit in the, the large bar area briefly while my lunch table was being prepared. So <laughs> fun times at Old Town and always fun times at Old Town whenever I can go out, no matter what the weather looks like. Yes, we had some May Gray on the morning that I filmed on May 13th, 2023. There we see La Casa de Estudio. We see Cosmopolitan Hotel. We see the end of the Kearney Trail plaque. December 12th, 1846. So I've got a lot to bring you coming up on History San Diego over the coming years. Uh, we have only really scratched the surface of History San Diego uh, and San Diego's early history. Uh, we're really at the early 1830s now at this point. So let's take a look back uh, as we look at Casa de Bandini over the years. And as I wish you the best... And as I thank you for watching, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to History San Diego. Take it easy. See you later.